So we are going to go take a grey water class, uh, kind of underground style. Some guy is going to make a grey water a system in his house or in his yard. That's illegal, but uh, there's some people who know how to do it who have invited a lot of us to come and learn how to uh, do it. So my name's Laura Allen and I'm part of a group called the Grey Water Gorillas. And we're a collaboration of artists and builders and plumbers. So we try to reuse water in our daily lives by using grey water. And we try to share our knowledge with other people and, and help spread that. So when I think about water, I think about how I can grow my own food in my backyard, how I can get my food more locally, and how I can reduce my kind of overall overall consumption, and how I can live really well with a lot less. So the idea is that today we are going to take the water that flows out of the sink, and instead of it going into the drain, uh, it's going to actually go into their yard. This pumps out about 10 gallons of water a day, so that's about 70 gallons a week, and then that should be enough to water these four small fruit trees that she has. So there are two fig trees. They actually need more watering because they're younger and also figs really need a lot of water. And that's a Fuji apple. It's been here forever, so it doesn't really need too much watering because it's got really deep roots already. The kitchen sinks can have a lot of food particles and they can clog things up. So designing the system, there'll be a lot of infiltration area. The gray water is not going to go through anything smaller than inch and a half pipe, and it will just pour out into wood chips and big mulch basins. Okay, so it's raining and we're... You don't want to put the gray water onto the part of the plant that you're going to eat. Um, there are potential health risks, and if you get the water going into the ground, there you know, are no more health risks than would be going out and eating some dirt from your garden, which is not a good idea. So you want to get the gray water into the ground, soaking down to irrigate the roots of your plants. In her old system, the plumbing just went straight to the sewer, so we installed a three-way valve. So now she can turn the valve and so it can either go to the grey water system or if she turns it the other way, it can still go to the sewer. So when she turns it to the grey water system, it basically runs through to the back of her yard. straight, it hits this and it splits the flow into two. Okay. Half of it's going to this big tree mm -hmm. and it's in a mulch basin so the water's yeah, flowing well, into yeah. mulch and then flowing through the basin. This will have a cover on it mm -hmm. so there, people won't access the grey water but if you want to check and see how the system's doing you can just take the lid off and look at it. a gray water code, so gray water theoretically is legal in California. Some states have no code, and so gray water is you know, not legal. So in California, you have the potential to do gray water. It is you know, theoretically legal. That said, the code that's written down for gray water is very, very um, wasteful. It's very bad. Most people don't follow it. So in California, most people have unpermitted systems, which are you know, technically illegal, just as building anything unpermitted is technically illegal. There's a lot of momentum to change the code in California. In other states, a lot of arid states have been feeling the water shortage, quote-unquote shortage. I mean, we have a lot of water, um, but we use a lot of it, so some people think there's a shortage. And those states like Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, they have changed their codes to fit um, health and safety. So a state like Arizona has a really a code that will help you build a good system that will be safe. You know, the gray water will go into the ground, it will work well, they tell you how to do it, and it's legal. Gray water is a lifestyle change, and it is, in the big scheme of things, very small. And this is, you know, a very small amount of water in the big scheme of things. So it's it's important to do this because it is changing how you interact with water. And it is it does make an impact. It adds up. Around the world, people are struggling for having clean, healthy rivers and watersheds. So we need to do this with a, a bigger picture a political analysis of why we're in the situation that we're in and kind of keep keep looking at the big picture as well as our, the small picture in our own house.